I am so obviously overwhelmed by where where we're at as a church and where I'm at and what the Lord is doing and I, I I'm excited last Last week, Jason came and he said, I got a message and I need to preach it. <laughs> and uh, I learned a long time ago when somebody comes up saying, I got a message and I need to preach it. I'm getting out of the way. So um, I said, well, do you want to do it this week or next week? He said, next week. Well, that's this week. So that's today. So he's going to come. But before he does, I just, I, I just want you, I just want to share something from my heart with you. As we're getting ready for, for me, for a real lifetime change. You know, it's not just, it's not a lifetime change for me. I think it's a lifetime change for our church. I am very, very humbled and honored to become the full-time pastor here on a full-time basis. I, my heart. I've had some ball out sessions with God. Are you sure you know what you're doing, God? <laughs> Are you sure you got this figured out, Lord? <laughs> and uh, on some of those times when I'm like, maybe, you know, are you sure, God? Are you sure? And I felt like the Lord really spoke to my heart, and I'm going to share that with you. And I consider this to be a great honor and a place of, for me, I want to serve God and I want to serve this church. I don't feel like I have earned this position. I don't feel like I deserve this position as pastor. I don't feel like it's something I've obtained because I've got my pension. I feel like that this is one of the greatest honors of my life to be able to serve here and to be full time. And I just, I love you and I'm excited about it. And so God bless you, Jason, come on up here and. We're going to let you share. Ooh, come on. Yeah. Give me a little encouragement. Um, I was really struck with the things that are going on in this world. Uh, the, the political unrest, the, the just unknown of our future as a country and as a people uh, in, in these days. And as usual, you know, I do a lot of driving, so I listen to a lot of music. And as usual, a song came on the radio, and it was by... Uh, Jeremy Camp, it's called These Days. And it starts out by saying, uh, well, in, in the short of the song, uh, we were born for these days. Each and every one of us here has a purpose for these days and this time. It's God set appointed. You are here for a purpose and for a reason. And God has called you by name. So no matter what the, whatever's going on in this world, rest assured that you have a purpose and you're here for a reason today. Just like our pastor is retiring and he's going to be a full-time pastor, it's, it's set a stone for him to be here at this appointed time. The song goes on to say, we are born to shine bright and not hold our lives, our light under, the, um, under a cover. As Christians, we are, we are here for a purpose and we're here to make the, the word of God known and make God known, right? As, as we've gotten this new building and we've moved into a new, new facility, a new era in this time of this church, I stand in the back a lot and I greet people and I pray for them as they come in. And I say, you know what, God, they're here for a reason and they're here for this appointed time. So if you don't think that you have a purpose, God says you have a purpose. There are things in this life that go on that we don't understand, but that's God's purpose. We are made, we are made for these days. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29. I spent a lot of time stewing over this word this last couple days. Um, I spent a lot of time 
trying to figure out what the purpose is of this message is to everybody. So I know that God's got a reason for people here today to, to hear it, that you are meant for these days, right? Romans 8, 29. We're going to start in 28. It says that we know that in all things, God works for the good. Those who love him have been called according to his purpose for those God foreknew. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. We have a purpose for these days in this community, in this church, in the world today. God has set you apart to do something for him, to get out of the pews, and to start doing something for God. Amen? He predestined it. I had my son bring up uh, four bottles of water, and he's like, who are all these for? And I go, for me, because I'm thirsty. See, God's got a plan for your life. And, and for me, this song hit hard for me and, and, and God was really working on me because he has a plan for me. And I, and I was struggling saying, what am I going to do with the youth group? What am I going to do with, with my life? Am I supposed to be where I'm supposed to be? Did I miss something along the way? No, God has predestined me to be here at this point in time to say this message to you. Mind blown. A lot of the times we get in our own ways. But if you ever think of it this way, what if we are part of his masterpiece? What if we were struggling so much that we missed the part that we are meant to be a beautiful painting in his masterpiece or part of something in his, of his masterpiece that he's working for good for you and me and has called us to be a part of. We were meant for these days, this, this specific point in time. God called you when you were born. God called me and said, Jason, you need to be born. I was born. And from that point on, God has been calling me and my time for these days, right? One of the verses in says is, we are born to shine bright in a dark world that needs light. That's pretty deep. What are we doing to shine bright for God? It hit me hard. What am I doing? What am I doing to shine bright for God? What am I doing at my job where I can minister to people? Am I raising my kids right so they can be light to the kid to other kids? You know, last week, uh, Pastor Dale spoke a message and he talked about the Dead Sea, and it really struck a chord with me. Uh, and uh, he talked about how the the Dead Sea is dead because it only has an inlet. And there's, there's no outflowing of the Dead Sea. And if there was, it would be washed clean and, and it would be, have minerals coming through it and life would be sustaining in it, right? So what if we were called to be, in these days, the outflowing for God? In a stagnant world, what if we were meant to be an outflowing of God's Spirit? an outflowing of God's movement instead of being stagnant and joining the world and just floating along in the dead and, and dead and being dead. You know, we were called just like the disciples 
I'm going to read that in Mark chapter 1, verse 16. It, it, in my Bible, the heading is, causing of, Jesus calls his first disciples. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing the nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. See, Jesus is calling us, right? If you came in here today, Jesus is calling you. Pick up the phone, right? Don't be the static on the other end. Right? When Dale spoke about the Dead Sea, I was like, oh man. Oh man, I don't want to be dead. I don't want my life to, to just be my life. I want to do something for God, right? And in these days and times, we are called and we are meant to shine bright and to put our light out on display instead of holding it behind our back or underneath our shirt or trying to sit on it. So my challenge to you guys, what are you guys doing in these days of your life? You have a purpose, you have a calling. It's time to step up and do something, right? Don't be stagnant. Be the outlet that, that the Dead Sea needs. It's almost like, you know, when he said that I saw a picture of God pouring water into, into the Dead Sea, right? Into like a bowl. And, and it's sort of like a representation of us. Like God's pouring into us and we're coming to church and we're learning more about God, right? We're, but we're not doing anything with it. Right? It's time to, pre to repent from our sins, turn away from our wicked ways, and start doing something for Christ. In Matthew 9.13, Pastor always said, if you couldn't preach good, preach short. Uh, I'm preaching both. No, I, Pastor, I just want to say to you, uh, you were meant to be here at this point in time in your life. Uh, God has called you for a purpose in this church. God has called you for a purpose in, in this area, in Roseburg. And I think that... Um, I think that in these days, they're going to be glorious for you. Matthew 9, 13. Sorry, we're going to start back in 9, 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors, sinners, and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why do you teach why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, Which this is great. I love this. It says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I stand before you a sinner, but God has called me. God has redeemed me to shine my light for him. I saw this thing on uh, Facebook. I took a screenshot of it because I'm like, oh man, that's pretty good preaching. Um, it 
I'm going to read it to you. Uh, it's one of my friends who's a Christian who is a, uh, lives up in Eugene. He, he posted this. It's from Man Church. <laughs> it says, you got hammered at a bar on Saturday, but came to church on Sunday. You can sit with me. You're right where you need to be. You're a drug addict, but came to church on Sunday. You can sit with me. You're right where you need to be. You're divorced, and the last church you attended condemned you for it. You can sit with me. You're right where you need to be. You've had an abortion, and it's slowly eating away at you, your heart. But you can come to. You came to church on Sunday. You can sit with me. You're right where you need to be. You've been unfaithful to your spouse, but came to church on Sunday. You can sit with me. You're right where you need to be. It says, here's the thing. People don't come to church on Sunday to sit in the pew and quietly, and, and quietly judge them because you feel that you're somehow better than them. People, people come to church in their deepest, darkest, most power, painful moments. They heard about a man named Jesus who could save their soul and they'd like to know him. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done in your life, you've been called in these days for a purpose in Christ. And that's why you're here. Whether you're a drug addict, dealing with things in your life, God has called you for a purpose today, and that's why you're here. To hear this message, to hear what God's saying to you, no ifs, ands, or buts, you're here for a purpose. I got saved when I was 16 years old. Actually, I, I got saved when I was five, but, you know, when you're five and you give your life to Christ, you don't, it's kind of like, eh, you know. But honestly, I got really saved and I really started doing something for God when I was 16 years old. I'm 42. When I got saved, I decided that I'm going to just jump in with both feet and get involved with the church. And I got involved with the church and they put me to work. And I started loving what I do. And I love people and I love praising God and I love working for God. And you know what? It has taken me to some of the most amazing places in this world. And one of the most amazing places that it has taken me is right here. Because this is where God has for me today. There's people out here today that are hearing this message and be like, wow, it's pretty deep. Well, yeah, this message is deep. We were chose for these days. I was chose at 16 years old to give my life to Christ for these days. Not just the one time giving it, you know, giving your life to Christ. Once you give your life to Christ, you're in. You better start doing something for him. We were meant for these days to shine bright in a world that needs light. To stand when it gets hard and to love with open arms. There's another, I saw another thing on Facebook that I took a screenshot. I thought it was really cool and I thought it was kind of relevant to my message. In 1912, there was an Olympic, the Olympic Games, which the Olympics are going to start here in a week or so. Jim Thorpe, a Native American from Oklahoma, represented the United States track and field. On the morning of his competition, his shoes were stolen. Can you imagine that? How many of you guys would just give up? If you were track and field and you're going out for the Olympics, you're representing your country, and your shoes are gone. Track and field. Kind of need those shoes, right? Just like Pastor took his shoes off. Right? You need those shoes. Luckily, Jim ended up finding a pair of shoes in the garbage. And it's probably the shoes that some the, the 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 shoes that the person stole, they probably took their shoes off and threw them away. Right? So we found a pair of shoes in the garbage, and he wore shoes that he found in the garbage. And one of the shoes was too big, so he wore an extra sock. Wearing these shoes, Jim won two gold medals that day. This is a perfect reminder 
that you don't have to resign to the excuses or be held back by things that happen to you in your life. So what's keeping you from being a light for God? What's keeping you from giving up those drugs? What's keeping you from coming down to this altar and crying out to God and saying, God, I need you. I've been doing this. I need to turn away from it. Turn away from it. Start doing something for Jesus. I mean, could you imagine the pressure that person, Jim, had? 1912, shoes are gone. Find shoes in the garbage. One's too big, so he just wears another sock. He was meant for those days in his life to, to do that, to be a representation of... So, I, you know, it was, it's crazy. He was meant to do that so I could see it on Facebook, so I could preach it to you guys. We were meant for the days that are ahead of us. We got some exciting times coming in the church. We got some exciting time coming in our lives. I know my life is very busy. I have four kids. My daughter is the apple of my eye. You know, when, when we decided to have a, our fourth kid and uh, my wife said, we better have a girl. And I was like, no doubt, because I, I want to walk her down the aisle. Right? I meant for these days. Not any other day. I wasn't meant for 1912, but Jim was. I wasn't meant for back, back in the biblical times when Jesus called the first disciples. I meant for here. Today. Right now. Tomorrow. Well, no one's promised tomorrow, but I meant for that. God called me to do something each and every day for him, right? But that's your choice. What are you going to do with it? So today, if you're finding that this message has challenged you, I'm done, so I'm going to pray. But if you found that this message has challenged you, as it has challenged me. I encourage you to come to the altar. Find out who God is. Come on. Amen, brother. We'll pray with you. I'm going to pray and then if you feel like you need prayer, come down here. If this message has called you, come down here. If it has challenged you, come down here. Get prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the message that you've given us. Lord, I pray right now for the, each and every individual that is meant for these days. They stand up. They start to work for you. And realizing the things that they can do in Christ. Amen.